Hello everyone. Welcome to Dental Meet. Today in this video we'll be talking about the NAT that is nucleic acid amplification test which includes the RT-PCR test and few other tests. So let's get started. So NAT or the nucleic acid amplification test. It consists of first of all the RT-PCR test which basically gives its results in two days and true NAT or the cartridge based NAT. Okay so true NAT is a battery operated portable test whereas CB NAT it requires continuous electricity and an AC supply. So we know that the RT-PCR the gold standard for the COVID-19 diagnosis it gives results in two to in one to two days whereas true NAT or CB NAT gives results in 30 minutes. So first of all what is RT-PCR the gold standard? See, this is real-time or quantitative RT-PCR test. It gives results in one to two days. The target genes for the RT-PCR test is ORF protein, the S or spike protein, E or envelope protein and the nucleocapsid. We must remember that the S protein is quite a sensitive protein. It is also present in certain viruses in certain other viruses whereas the nucleocapsid it is a highly specific protein. Now RT-PCR gives cyclic threshold value or the CT value. What is a CT value? It is basically number of cycles required to amplify the viral RNA to reach a detectable level. So the cyclic threshold or CT value is how many times or how many cycles are we in how many cycles are we amplifying the viral RNA so that it is detectable okay so with this what we can understand is if the viral load or the amount of virus present in the body is high then we need less amount of amplification usko less number of times we need to multiply so the number of cycles that is the cyclic threshold or the CT value would be less. So this basically determines what viral load. Now this viral load is inversely proportional to the CT value. Why? Because if the viral load would be high then the virus would be easily detectable with less number of amplification cycles. So the CT value would be less. But if the viral load is less, then we need to amplify the viral RNA numerous times because of which the CT value increases in less viral load. Now, how do we infer to CT values? See, if the CT value is less than 29, then there is high viral load if it is between 30 to 37 the viral load is moderate if it is between 38 to 40 then the viral load is minimal see the ct value of the rt pcr it is also a potential marker of severe disease it tells about the candidates who can have a severe disease. It also gives discharge criteria for the patients. Now if a patient is asymptomatic but persistently positive with RT-PCR then the patients with CT value more than 35 more than 34 can be discharged from the hospitals. Next if we talk about true NAT or the cartridge based NAT we have seen that one is battery operated one needs one requires electricity 
true nat is portable and both of them they give result in 30 minutes now these are used to detect two kinds of genes first is the e gene or the envelope gene so the e gene basically holds up all the components of the virus and the second is the rdrp that is rna dependent rna polymerase gene this helps in viral multiplication so since two genes are being detected so this follows a two step assay first of all is the e gene screening now after e gene screening if the result is negative then it is regarded as true negative a covid negative patient if e gene screening is positive then rdrp genes screening has to be done for confirmation now if rdrp gene is negative then we need to confirm it with rt pcr but if rdrp gene sa is positive then the patient is true covid positive patient so basically what we can see here is after rdrp gene confirmation the result if negative we need to confirm it with the rt pcr because that is the gold standard set for covid 19 diagnosis but how can we uh, like regard the patient as true negative or true positive true negative if e gene screening is negative and true positive if rdrp gene screening is positive this is it about the nat or the nucleic acid amplification test and rt pcr in the coming videos we'll be talking about the radiological findings in covid-19 patients so stay tuned keep visiting thank you